The next part is expanding and contracting logarithms. We are going to use the last three properties. So remember the first property was product rule. Second property was quotient rule. And third property was power rule. Remember product rule says if you have log of a product, it's the sum of the logs. Quotient rule says if you have a log of a quotient, it's the difference of the logs. And power rule says if you have a log of a value to an exponent, you could go ahead and throw the exponent in front of the log and make it into a product. We're going to use these three rules. These are like the golden rules of logs. And we're going to use them to be expanding and contracting logarithms. So we're going to start with just expanding logs. And expanding logs, it's going to look like, a, I always say, a tree. You're going to start with something small and you want to expand it out. So then you're going to have one log here and then several logs in your answer. So you start with one log, you start using the properties of logs to expand it, and then your answer should have several logs in it. So it looks like a tree. Three rule of thumbs. The first rule is to write all products as sums, write all quotients as differences, and all powers as factors. So we like to go in order, rule one and rule two, those rule of thumbs are probably best to use together at the same time. And then in the end, look at powers on your values of logs and see if you can rewrite them as factors. So these I would do first, and this one I would do second. So looking at the first example, expand the logarithm by rewriting as a sum or difference of logs with powers as factors. So we have log base 3 of 9m to the 4th over cube root of n. So there's a lot of stuff going on. The first thing I would do is just notice what I am working with. Notice I have a quotient as my value. So right away I know I'm going to use the quotient rule. I also see some a product, and so I probably would use the product rule, and I see an exponent on m, so I, I kind of have the instinct that I'm going to be using all three rules. So the first thing I'm going to use is the quotient rule because that was the most obvious to me, so I'm going to do the most obvious first. So I'll go ahead and start with log base 3 of 9m to the 4th over cube root of n. Since I have log of a base of a quotient, I know this is going to be the difference of the two logs, so this will become log base 3 of 9m to the 4th minus log of cube root of n. Again, the denominator value goes after the subtraction sign. So we use quotient rule first. Rule of thumb says I use quotient and product rule first. So I use quotient rule. Let's see if I need to use product rule. And sure enough, I do see 9m to the 4th. This is like 9 times m to the 4th. So I'm going to have log base 3 of 9 plus log base 3 of m to the 4th. And copy and paste minus log base 3 of cube root of n. So I went ahead and used product rule. And last rule of thumb is that you write all powers as factors. Now right away I see a power on m. But recall that there is some sort of power going on here also. So copy and paste log base 3 of 9 plus log base 3 of m to the 4th minus, and I'm going to rewrite the cube root of n as n to the one-third. Now I haven't used the power rule yet. I just rewrote in this third line the cube root of n to be n to the one-third. Now I can see I have power rule to use on two terms. And now I'm going to go ahead and use the power rule in the last step. 
And I'm going to do double duty here. I see log base 3 of 9. And remember, log base 3 of 9 it just asks 3 to what power gives me 9, right? And that's 2. So we can go ahead and actually simplify that if we can. Notice we could simplify this one, so we definitely do it. Plus, put the 4 in front of the log, rewrite it as a factor, minus take the one third, put it in front of the log, rewrite it as a factor. And looks like we are all done. We used all three rules. All powers are written as factors. I have a sum and a difference of a log and we can box it. So what you really want to do is make sure it looks like a tree. Notice in a way it looks like a tree because we started off with one log using the three properties notice we expanded and got a sum and difference of logs on the bottom there was we started off with one log we had several logs in our answer so make sure that all exponents are written in front of the log and written as factors make sure you don't have a product in your values make sure you simplify any logs that you can simplify and then that is when you know you're done and you've expanded your logarithm Now we're going to contract logarithms, and this looks like an upside down triangle or a capital delta if for you Greek people. Because you're going to start off with several logs, and you're going to use the properties to contract and get one log. So it's completely in reverse of what we just did. Instead of expanding, going from one log to several, we'll be contracting, meaning taking several logs and contracting them to one log. So the rule of thumbs also go in reverse. Notice the, rule of the first rule of thumb, which you should definitely do first, says to write all, all factors as powers. So make sure you do that first. Then you can write all sum as products and all difference as quotients. So again, a complete reverse of what we just did. So in the following example, they want us to write log base 2 of 9 plus 2 log base 2 of x minus log base 2 of x minus 4 as a single logarithm. So again, this should look like an upside down triangle. or a capital delta. The first step, rule of thumb says write all factors as powers. So I need to see if there's any coefficients right in front of the logs. Right? That's what this means. Because right? if, if I use power rule and I put the exponents down in front of the log as factors, then definitely these are going to be coefficients of logs in which I'll have to bring back up. So this is okay. There is the coefficient, the default coefficient 1. We don't always write it. We know it's there. So there's that's okay. And we go to the second term. Notice there's a 2 as a coefficient in front of the log. So I'll have to bring that up on the value on x. And then minus log base 2, and there's no coefficient in front of the log here, so we're okay. So I'm going to rewrite log base 2 of 9 plus, and then now I'm going to use power rule and bring this 2 up on the value of x. So we'll have log base 2 x squared minus copy and paste log base 2 x minus 4. So in this step, we use power rule. Okay, it says once we use the power rule, get all factors as powers, then we can go ahead and write sums as products and differences as quotients. So the first thing I'll see is the first two terms. There's a sum of two logs with the same base. So I'll rewrite this using the product rule and rewrite the values as a product. 
So log base two of nine times x squared. And copy and paste what you haven't used, minus log base two of x minus four. So in this one, I went ahead and used the product rule. Notice now I have two logs and with same base, difference in between, now I'm gonna write all difference as quotients. Okay, so again, I wanna remind you at this point to stop and, real and remember what your goal is, is to contract this, these logs. So you started off with several logs and you wanna contract to one log. We are on our way, right? We started off with three logs and now we're down to two logs and I'm gonna use the quotient rule. Remember that the value behind the subtraction sign is the denominator in your fraction. So now I'm gonna have log base two of nine x squared over x minus four. And I'll put that in big parentheses. And now it looks okay. I look at this quotient and by instinct of doing the rational expression chapter, I want to simplify this, but notice nothing can be simplified and it's already simplified enough. And we have contracted three logs to one log, which it was our goal.